Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Thank you for being here today. And uh, as always, we like to uh, say we appreciate uh, our friends that join us on the front row. Uh, I'm glad that you know we kind of started the, the front row of putting it out on YouTube uh, during COVID, and um, people seem to like it. And we have some people that uh, aren't able to physically be here, so they get to watch uh, that way. So thank you for joining on the front row, uh, and uh, God bless you, and uh, we keep you in our, our prayers. Uh, as always, uh, you know, leave us a, a like or a dislike. Most people say leave us a like. And I'm like, leave us a like or a dislike. Either way is good by me. If you like it, that's wonderful. If you don't, at least that's something, uh, you know. Uh, so we appreciate that. Amen. Thank you for that. I'm going to be in uh, the book of Joshua this morning. Joshua chapter number two. And I don't know how many of y'all had a chance to uh, go out while you find your place uh, and vote this week, but... Uh, uh, this past week was what Super Tuesday, and and I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. That's up between you and the Lord. Uh, but um, the wife and I went, and, and I told her I said we got to go uh, vote. She said it's not November. I said well no, it's not, but it's the primaries, uh, Super Tuesday, and and let's go. It'll do us good. We get to exercise. And and uh, there were some young fellows there from uh, a local charter school. They were having some kind of a uh, a class assignment that they were doing. So they were trying to get data from people who were voting. Uh, and uh, I told them, I said, well, uh, just, you know, wait till I come out and I'll, you know, it was a short survey kind of thing about who you voted for, uh, trying to help them. And I got no objection to that. They weren't telling me who to vote for or anything. Just want to know, you know, get an idea. And, uh, they said uh, who uh, uh, something about what what I was going to vote for. I said, "Well, look, uh, I, I'm going to vote for Elvis. Uh, he's not on the ballot, and he's dead, but I'm going to write him in anyway." You know, <laughs> uh, and they kind of looked at me funny. They was like, "Elvis is dead." I'm like, "Yeah, he's dead, but I'm going to write him in. He'd be just as good as anybody, right?" Hey, Amen. We need uh, uh, we need some stability. Our country, uh, boy, do we need leaders. We need them. Amen. We need them. Uh, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't know what to do with uh, being a senator or a congressperson or whatever. I, I wouldn't know what to do with that job. So I pray for them. God said we need to pray for our leaders. Amen. And so, uh, if uh, if you got one that you really love, then praise God for it. Uh, if you got one that you really don't like, then pray for him or her or whomever. Amen. All right, enough said about that. Joshua chapter number two. Um, and uh, I want to read uh, verse number one. And Joshua, the son of Nun, uh, sent out of uh, Sidon two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went, and they came to an harlot's house named Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither the night uh, of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent to Rahab and said, Bring forth the men that were come unto thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came two men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, uh, the men went out. Uh, whether the men uh, went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Now, uh, she's, uh, she's well practiced in the art of deceit, it would seem. Uh, but she was doing what she thought was right, and she was doing what was right. Uh, it said, but she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them uh, the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they were, uh, which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. Amen. Before they were laid down, she came up to them upon uh, the roof. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father. 
I thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for these that have come today. Uh, I pray, Lord, uh, I know that you know uh, each and every heart. And you know exactly what we need today. And, I, and you're able to meet uh, every uh, individual need. I pray, Lord, that you search our hearts. Help us, Lord, that the word uh, would speak to us, draw us closer unto thee. I pray that you would guard my lips that every word uh, would bring honor and praise and glory unto thee. I pray if there's one here today that don't know you as Savior, that today would be the day that they would come to you in the free pardon of sin. Lord, we're uh, living in the last hour. I pray, God, that you'd move people's hearts. Help us uh, to stand in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. A great story. Uh, and I didn't read it all. You can read it uh, sometime, uh, the rest of it for yourself. But uh, the Bible says uh, this encounter went on uh, and she had hidden those men and they told her, when we come to take the city, they said, you hang a scarlet line out your window. She lived in a house on the wall of Jericho. Um, Jericho was a thriving city. Uh, in fact, the Bible mentions, uh, I believe three times mentions Jericho uh, and calls it the city of palms. The city of palms. Jericho is a type of life. And if you can think of the lay of the land, uh, Jerusalem is up here, Jericho is down here, and then way down here you got the Dead Sea. Uh, so it's uh, in between. Uh, it was a thriving place. Now there's not much there today. Um, there's a few archeological digs and that sort of thing going on, but a whole not, not a whole lot there. Uh, and there's a reason for that. We'll get to that. But, uh, you know, this woman, the Bible said, uh, did exactly what they told her to do. And she hung out that scarlet thread out of her window. And when the Israeli army saw that, they avoided her house. In fact, they saved her and her household. Uh, and she, you will find her in the book of Hebrews mentioned in the roll call of the faithful. She committed a, an act of faith uh, in you know, herself not being an Israelite, but she had heard of the great things of God. She had heard of the wonders of the Lord. She was evidently dissatisfied with the life that she was living. Uh, and guess what? God transformed her. Romans 12, 2 said, Be ye not transformed, to this world, or be ye not conformed, rather, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, conformed, I like to think of it as a, like a jello mold. When you make jello, you pour it in a mold and it comes out looking just like that mold. Um, he said, Don't be like that. Don't conform yourself to the world, but be transformed. The word transform, the Greek word, is uh, metamorpho. Uh, and we get our word metamorphosis from that. It literally means to transmute or to transform the fundamental nature of a thing. Now, doesn't that fit into where we live today? To transmute or to transform the fundamental nature of a thing. Now, we're living in a day when people want to transform themselves. How many people uh, uh, that, you know, were supposedly men uh, have decided that they want to become women and they've entered the world of women's sports and they have ruined women's sports? Now, let me say, uh, this, this may get me kicked off of YouTube, but I can't help it. Uh, it is what it is. I, I'm not um, an ideologue. Uh, I'm here to preach the gospel. And listen, gentlemen, you that were born with the XY chromosome, you can put on a little frilly dress, and you can put on lacy women's underwear, and you can put on lipstick and rouge and 
you can curl your hair and dye it all kinds of different colors, but that doesn't make you a woman. Amen? Listen, one of the greatest things, one of the most beautiful things God ever made was a woman. I'll have to tell you that. But listen, just because I appreciate the beauty of a woman uh, doesn't mean that I want to be one, Brother Wesley. I can appreciate them from arm's distance. Amen. I like all the things they do and the, you know, the way they talk and the way they walk and the, the things they add to a household. I mean, uh, if you came to my house and my wife wasn't there, uh, you would think, man, uh, uh, this guy is a, a terrible person because, uh, you know, I, I'm not uh, about, you know, sitting out Easter bunnies. My, my wife's got them all over the house now. Uh, <laughs> You know, Valentine's Day, uh, she had all that stuff, and she puts stuff up outside, and and uh, she, uh, you know, she gets me involved in that. Uh, I want to go to Hobby Lobby. I'm like, yes, dear. <laughs> Off we go, Hobby Lobby. Aren't you going in with me? No, I'm going to sit in the car. You go knock yourself out. <laughs> I need help putting this up on the outside. Well, I'll do that. But just because, I, and I appreciate those things. They do look good. You know, and, and sometimes I laugh because it's a kind of a contest between the neighbors, you know. <laughs> My wife will look at it and she'll say, oh, look, over there, Christine's already got the stuff up. I got to hurry, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing uh, uh, going on. So it's all, but it's all done in fun, but, uh, but it's good. But listen, uh, God says uh, that, that we are not to be conformed, but we are to be transformed and we need transformation. Don't, don't get me wrong. We need transformation, but it's not physical transformation we need. We need spiritual transformation. Amen. We don't need uh, guys trying to become women, and we don't need girls trying to become men. We need a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost to uh, get down to the bottom of your soul, uh, uh, kick sin out, and get God in uh, Transformation, that's what we need. That's what happened to Rahab. I read a story about an older man who was very rough, uncultured, not as clean as some people thought maybe he should have been. He saved all his money, and, and he bought this uh, beautiful vase that he had seen in a store window. He thought that was the loveliest thing, and so he brought it home, and he set it up on the, the shelf. He placed it on the mantel. And he'd go by and he'd look at that vase and he'd say, you know what, this vase outshines uh, everything else on the mantle. So he started cleaning up. And then he said, I've cleaned that up and now, well, I don't like the, the rug that's on the floor. It don't look good with my new vase. And so he bought a new rug. And I don't like the couch that uh, I had. So uh, he bought a new couch and he just kept going. And it was a, a, a rug. It was a, a couch. Uh, uh, and then it was curtains and an old chair that he had. And then uh, he said, you know, I think I need to place, replace the wallpaper. Uh, and he did that. And then I need to put trim up. And before you know it, he had uh, remodeled his whole house because uh, uh, he wanted everything to be in keeping with that new, lovely, beautiful vase that he had bought. Amen? All because of that one lovely vase. That's what God will do for you. If you let the Lord in your heart, he will transform you. And, and, and what these people, and don't get me wrong, I, I'm not without empathy and I'm not without compassion, uh, but people uh, just can't be content today. They, they are looking for something. They are searching for something. They, they uh, don't feel like they're at home in their own skin, and they feel like they need something. What they need is the Lord. Now listen, I was born a guy. I'm, I'm happy being a guy, and I'm happy with my, my ugly, knobby, hairy self, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a desire to put on uh, lipstick and, and all that kind of stuff, you know. I leave that to my wife. She looks uh, lovely doing that, and I appreciate that. But listen, God transformed me when he saved me, and he's still transforming me. Let's look at her condition. She lived a life 
a perpetual sin. She lived in a wicked, depraved lifestyle without God. The, the Bible says in the Old Testament that, uh, uh, that being a prostitute or a harlot is something that God uh, does not approve of. Now, he didn't say that he didn't love the person or that he wouldn't help a person or that he wouldn't save a person, but he said that lifestyle is enmity against God and so is many other things. She is a picture of every lost person. Now you may say, but I'm not a harlot, I'm not a prostitute, I'm a good person, I'm a good moral person. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about Rahab's real problem. Her real problem wasn't being a prostitute. Her real problem was sin. Sin. One that she inherited Same one that you and I inherited. Amen. Amen. We are all born into this world and we inherited something from our forefathers, Adam and Eve, and it's called sin. And we have to deal with that. And if we don't deal with that, we're going to wind up in a place that we don't want to be. So the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. That means me, that means you. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? And you say, well, you mean everybody's a sinner? They sure are. Every person in this auditorium today, every person who will view this on, uh, on the front row, has the same problem. We're all sinners. In fact, the Bible tells us, even as Christians, even though we got saved and we know the Lord now, God said, don't get too high and mighty and think that you're better than everybody else just because you're saved, because God uh, had to reach down and save you. Amen. Amen. And you've heard the old saying, "Without uh, but for the grace of God, there go I. We're sitting here in an auditorium this morning and we got a good seat to sit on. Uh, uh, It's pleasant to look at. It's comfortable, at least to some people. Uh, uh, To others, it may be warm, uh, uh, but you can't please everybody, right? Uh, uh, And and so, uh, but we're in a good place. And a lot of folks don't have that. There are some folks today who are living under a bridge somewhere. There are folks who are living out in the woods. Uh, there are folks, I've seen them in my own eyes. I've seen folks living by the railroad tracks. My, my wife and I went on a journey a few years ago, and we were taking a bus and going to this town. As we were going down, there were railroad tracks that ran parallel to the road, and I looked, and I saw people, and I saw, what are they doing? And I saw a man and a woman and little children out there, uh, and uh, they were living in a, a cardboard box, big uh, boxes like refrigerators and stuff come in. They put them together. That was their house. And outside they had a big cauldron and they had built a fire under it and they were cooking something in that cauldron uh, to eat. Now man and woman, I, I mean, is one thing, but you see those little children running around out there, that really struck my heartstrings. Living by the railroad tracks in a cardboard box. Uh, you know, I, I've seen other places where you know, children, they didn't have uh, a phone to play on. They didn't have an Xbox or a PS4 or those kind of things. Their toy was an old bicycle rim. And with that bicycle rim, they were running around with a forked stick and, and they were uh, taking that uh, bicycle rim and pushing it with a forked stick. That was their toy. They didn't have all this fancy stuff. So let's not get too high and mighty. Because there but for the grace of God go I. She lived in a place of pending judgment. She was living in a condemned city. As I mentioned a while ago, Deuteronomy 34.3 calls Jericho the city of palm trees. Now you've heard me say before and you'll probably hear me say it again if I'm fortunate enough to be here a while uh, and, not, uh, and God not call me home. I like palm trees. I always have. 
I, I love them. If, if this area was, was conducive to growing palm trees, I would have palm trees in my yard. The homeowners association probably wouldn't like that too much, but I, but I would. I, I like them. I don't know, just something about them. That, uh, God said there's going to be palm trees in heaven. Amen? And, and uh, you know, I, I mean, I could go on. But listen, it, it was a city of palm trees. Uh, 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 Joshua chapter 6 tells us that, that that city, though, had a curse placed upon it. After they overran the city, Joshua cursed the place in the name of the Lord, and he said, Cursed be the man that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. And guess what? That curse is in effect today. There's nothing there. Nothing. Like I said, except maybe an archaeological ruin or something like that. Why? Because God cursed it. Now, God had already determined that place was going to be destroyed. But Rahab was there. Her family was there. She was living on the wall, on the outside wall. And she didn't know the danger that she was in. Now listen, folks, the average person in the world that's not saved, doesn't know the Lord, they are not very cognizant of the danger that they are in. They don't know. Life is like a vapor. It appears for a little season and then vanisheth away. I've seen it time and time again. I've seen people who you would have thought uh, they would have been healthy. Maybe they had some accident. I recall a, a woman right now, years ago, I, uh, uh, when I was working, uh, you know, first response, uh, I answered uh, a call and uh, there was a, a wreck and this lady uh, uh, and another car had hit one another uh, and I didn't tend to the woman. One of the friends of mine uh, uh, that worked there was tending to her and I was out trying to direct traffic and that kind of stuff, uh, but I could see what was going on. They were no closer, no further away than the wall over there. Uh, and, and the lady looked like she was fine, uh, shook up, but, but fine. Uh, and, uh, but my friend said, you know, we probably need to get her checked out. And they called the ambulance. They put her in the, in the ambulance. And she died on the way to the hospital because she had internal injuries that we couldn't see. We couldn't see. Uh, I, I, I walked one morning down the High Cone Road. This has been years ago. A group of kids going to Northeast High School. They were in their senior year. And they were going to Northeast High School. And at that time, uh, I don't know if they've changed it, but High Cone Road had, uh, uh, you know, had dips in it. And there was a dip in it where uh, uh, if you were on this end, uh, going toward the school, the road dipped down and you could not see who was in the dip. And it was fun to take a car and run that dip and get this car speed up as much as you could because you would jump that hump and, and you would go, you know, all Dukes of Hazard and all that kind of stuff, you know. So the guys, me among them, thought it was fun, you know, to jump that hump. Uh, and there were some others around here. I think they fixed it now. But anyway, these, these kids were traveling together in that car. And they floated uh, across the lane. And they couldn't see that coming the opposite direction was a car in that dip. And when they jumped that, uh, jumped that dip, they hit that other car head on. And it threw bodies all over the road. And I, I went to one to check on that person uh, and I looked, checked for a pulse, and I got no pulse, and I checked their eyes, and their pupils were fixed and dilated, uh, and I knew at that point they were, they were gone. So I took my service jacket, and I covered that person up. Uh, on the way to school. On the way to school, never finished. You know, probably 17, 18 years old. Life is short. Amen? This place was already under judgment. The Bible said that the judgment of God hangs over the sinner. You don't have, you're not going to wait on it. It's already hanging over you. But God is compassionate. She learned about a powerful but a forgiving judge. In verse 10, she said, For we have heard 
how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. She had heard about the power of Almighty God. Now, there's probably not a person here today that this is your first time of hearing the word of God. You've heard it in your life. You've probably heard it all your life. You heard it before, uh, uh, probably before you ever uh, set foot in a church. You've heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, it's a dangerous thing. The Bible said uh, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And so every time we hear the word of God, we make a choice whether we think about we're making one or not. We either accept it and we choose to become part of it and let it become part of us or we, we reject it and walk away. This woman, she saw that trouble was coming. She had heard about God and she said, well, surely not only is he powerful, but he is able to save because he saved you from Pharaoh and the armies. And so uh, what was she saying? She wanted to be part of that. The Bible said in Romans 2, 4, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and the forbearance and long suffering, not knowing the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. You know, when I was doing crazy things like I told you about a minute ago, about jumping the hump and, and other things, I, I could tell you, I, I do some things now that I just can't believe that I did. I, I You know, I've been up on a, 25-story uh, building uh, where the ledge was like that wide and, uh, you know, walk the ledge. No ropes, no nothing, just, just because I could. I can't believe I did that. That was the dumbest thing, you know. That was just beyond stupid. Uh, but I was young and stupid. But guess what? God was looking out for me. And God looks out for uh, all of us. He truly does. But Listen, God had compassion on her and she heard the word and she'd heard the message and she hated the word. She uh, noticed what she did in verse nine. Uh, uh, she said unto them, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Now, she used the word Lord. Now, if you look in your Bible, that's in all caps because it means that the word in the original language is Jehovah or actually there's no vowels in it. It's Y-H-V-H, -H, Jehovah. She used his name. This is God's covenant name. This is the name where God said to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will give you this land. This was the name, and he said, I, the Lord, have done it. This was the name that God said when he sent Moses down to Egypt, and Moses said, who shall I tell them has sent me? And God said, you tell them that I am, I am the self-existent one, the Lord. She said, I have heard the Lord. I know the Lord will give you this land. So she's already on her, her way. Well, what happened? She completed that act by hiding these men because they would surely have been put to death had she not done that. And so this was an act of faith. She, she switched sides. Can you see it? She switched sides right there. I'm done with this place. I'm done with that life that I was living. I, I'm done with all of this stuff. Uh, can I be part of your group? You know, and that's what it's all about. It's not about uh, saying certain words. We, we've heard people talk about the sinner's prayer, you know, say this and say that. Well, listen, the, there's really not a sinner's prayer in the Bible per se. The closest thing that I find is the seven words that the publican said when he bowed his head and said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Amen. Amen. But there's not a prescribed way. I've had people ask me, you know, when they want to be saved, uh, 
you know, and I'll say, we need to pray and you need to talk to the Lord. And they'll say, but what do I say? You know, they want me to give them some word. Uh, and I said, well, I can't really put words in your mouth. Uh, I, you need to pray and talk to the Lord and tell him what's on your heart. You know, God hears you and he will understand you. You don't have to say what I would say. You don't have to go back and dredge up every sin that you've ever done and confess it because God already knows all about it. He saw you when you did it. He heard you when you said it. All that God wants is a transformation. Amen? Amen? Spiritual transformation. Now, let's look lastly at her completion. Amen? And there's proof that she became a completed person, completed Christian in the fact that she labored for the Lord. She hid them under the flax. She kept their secret. She didn't go out and tell it. She could have went to the king's emissary and said, look, I've had some people come to my house and I've got them hidden. They're spies. I will sell you the information. I'll tell you where they're at if you will pay me. She could have got a big payday out of that, but she didn't because she had already switched sides. Whose side are you on? Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, Jehovah. We will serve the Lord. James chapter 2, verse 25 says, Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. And understand, it wasn't works that saved her, but it was faith that produced the works. Faith produced works. If you really have faith, then you will do something about it. You know, I remember the first time uh, I recall seeing my wife was here in this church. And we came here from the mountains and we joined this church and I remember seeing her and and, uh, you know, I, I thought uh, she was older than she was. Uh, she thought I was stuck up and, uh, and was full of myself. <laughs> but um, over time, you know, I, I said, I like her. And so, you know, we went out a time or two. And, and then uh, I found myself doing something I had never done before. Now, now get this, I, I was making a dollar and 60 cents an hour. So it wasn't like I could uh, really afford a whole lot. But I said, you know what, I think she needs some flowers, Brother Andrew. And so I took uh, some of my money out of my dollar 60 budget and I got her some flowers and took to her because I said, I think she will enjoy those. And I enjoyed giving them to her. Why did I do that? Because... You know, I, I was wanting things to go forward. I was showing my interest in her, uh, not just a passing interest, but, you know, I want this to be something uh, uh, more definite. Notwithstanding, you know, I was, a, I was afraid of Brother Grover. Uh, we, uh, we went out, uh, I think we went to Ringman Brothers, uh, the Barnum and Bailey Circus one year, and uh, Grover had a tight timeline. He said, you know, you go out and you eat and you go to the circus, do whatever, but you be back here by such and such time. Yes, sir. And, and I always tried to be there early, you know. Uh, well, that night, uh, we went out. We enjoyed the show. We went out and went in the parking lot, and I got in the car, and instead of cranking up, it went, uh, you know, you've heard that sound. Uh, I was like, oh, Lord. And... I wasn't so much worried about the car. I was worried about Brother Grover giving me a beat down because I was going to be late. <laughs> uh, anyway, and, and there weren't any cell phones in those days. And, and finally, we found a way to get word through that we were, we were going to be late. And we, uh, we found a way uh, uh, and got the thing going. Uh, and, uh, and sure enough, we were late uh, getting there. But I got her home in one piece and, 
and uh, you know everything was lovely. He said, "I appreciate you you bringing her home." And I and uh, and I said, "Yes, sir." And, and when I walked out the door, I went, Shh, you know. <laughs> Why? Because you know I, I had an interest in her. I started doing something about it. And then before long, the the flowers gave way to thinking about other things. And I said, you know. I think she would like something shiny to go on her finger, you know. And I went to uh, uh, Kay Jewelers and got a little ring. It was like a, a, what do they call it, a promise ring, friendship ring? I don't know. But, man, it wasn't as big as a grain of sand. Uh, but but, but they, wanted a, they wanted a price for it, you know. I said, good Lord, I need my microscope to see that thing, you know. And I think she's still got that thing somewhere. Uh, but I got that ring for her, you know. And then uh, after that, uh, uh, later on, uh, you know, uh, a wedding ring. And, and then, uh, you know, when we were 25 or so years in, uh, uh, she decided that her ring, uh, her diamond had shrunk. <laughs> and she needed another one. So, uh, you know, we got that. But, but listen, uh, uh, and so you see what I'm getting at here. Uh, when you give yourself to the Lord, you will start doing things for God. It, it's a evidence of the faith that is in uh, your heart. You, you just don't sit there and do nothing. You don't make a profession and then leave the church and never come back again uh, because this will become your, your new home. Rahab had a transformation. That's what we need in our land today. Amen. Not... not uh, you know, young children who, uh, you know, like the, the, the school teacher a while back who had a child they brought to her class and they said, uh, you know, we're bringing this box of kitty litter because our daughter thinks she's a cat. Uh, and, you know, they had to let the child use the litter box and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you, you know, I, I could spend a whole lot of time right there, but, but I'm not. You, you get the point. We need transformation. But a spiritual transformation. Let's stand our feet. Thank you for coming. Those on the front row, thank you for tuning in. And I would say to you today, have you been transformed? Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. Has God done a work in your heart like he did in Rahab? Do you have a desire for the word of God? Do you have a desire for the things of God? Do you want God to do a work in you? Do you want to be friends with God? Do you want God to be friends with you? These are all evidences of having a transformative work done in your heart.